Hey, welcome back everyone. So it's kind of a short video this week. As the title suggests today, I have a shop infrastructure build. Um, if you've been following along with some of my projects, you know that I do a lot of 3D printing and then I'm also traveling the country right now in an RV. So I sleep right next to my 3D printer and the majority of the printing is either in PLA or PATG, which are both low toxicity 3D printing filaments, but even these plastics aren't necessarily safe in such a small space. And now with the RC Hypercar build and my latest Streamliner project, I need to be able to print more advanced engineering materials like uh, nylons and polycarbonates, both of which are kind of noxious smelling and very toxic. Looking online, both the commercial and DIY filtration systems really run the gamut from great designs to not so great. Uh, generally, the better designed commercial systems were upwards of $1,000 and also quite large, something I couldn't fit into my RV here. For DIY filtration systems, there was really only one or maybe two designs that I would trust with my health, but it ended up not being a good fit for my enclosure. So I ended up going down the custom designed filtration route and as a bonus, I can add more functionality to my filtration system in the future. So most of the poor designed commercial and DIY systems suffered from three main issues, at least in my non-expert opinion. First, they all tended to have far too small of an activated charcoal filter to be effective or to last for a reasonable amount of time. They also often used inadequate fans that were just incapable of providing a sufficient amount of airflow through the filter medium. And then finally, most enclosures are not fully airtight and only a handful of the filtration systems that I saw were actually designed to create a negative pressure environment in the enclosure, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. So I think it's easiest to actually look at this design in CAD so you can actually see what's going on inside the filter and the plenum housing here. Uh, the air inlet is located here at the bottom of the enclosure where it will pull in cold air from below the printer. I used a round off the shelf HEPA filter meant for a vacuum cleaner as the initial filter stage to remove any particulates. The second stage attaches to the first stage with four four millimeter bolts and some brass heat stakes. And you'll see some differences here because I found out it was very difficult to take apart. The way I had this oriented, the one I'll upload onto printables has the bolts on the bottom, which is much easier to access. The second stage here has a, I don't know, about 50 or 60 millimeter deep bed of activated charcoal. I wanted to have a lot of charcoal in there so that it would last a long time as well as slow the air down so that it has, the charcoal has a chance to actually absorb any of those VOCs coming off the plastics. I have a grid here on the bottom of the second stage and a ring around that that actually gets glued in separately. This ring goes in after you kind of stretch some women's pantyhose over the bottom section, glue that down, then glue the ring in. This helps to retain the smaller charcoal particles and the ring itself helps to seal against the rubber portion of the vacuum cleaner filter. Then on top of the two filter stages, I have a mount for a fan that attaches with kind of a twist bayonet style type fitting. For the fan, I have a 120 millimeter blower fan or squirrel cage fan that was $20 from Amazon and it includes the speed controller and power supply and everything. The beauty of this style fan is that it can operate a much higher pressure ratio than your typical 12 volt computer style axial fan. In fact, this fan can actually pull so much air that I had to actually create this veined diffuser at the top to actually help hold the charcoal in so that it wouldn't get sucked through the fan. I also glued some women's nylon pantyhose onto this vein to diffuser as well. Even with all this, I usually only use about half of the fan's maximum speed. The recommendation for hazardous chemicals is six to 12 air changes per hour, which equates to around 1.6 CFM for a two foot by two foot by two foot enclosure like mine. Obviously, I'm going completely overkill with this fan that outputs a 33 CFM unrestricted. On top here where the fan is mounted, I actually have a, an air diverter valve, and this diverter valve can route the exhaust from the filter to either return back to the enclosure or vent the air outside of the enclosure. This helps to facilitate both temperature control and creating a negative pressure inside the enclosure. 
So first, let's talk about the importance of having a negative pressure inside of your 3D printer enclosure. So short of high-end commercial 3D printers, most enclosures are not perfectly airtight, and they don't really need to be perfectly sealed, honestly. Uh, if you install one of the air scrubber style filtration systems for 3D printers that just recirculate the air within the enclosure, unfortunately, some of that toxic stuff will eventually leak out of the enclosure. Uh, but with a negative pressure filtration system, some of the filtered air is always being fed out side of the enclosure. Because less air is being returned to the enclosure than is being pulled in through the air inlet, this creates a low pressure zone inside the enclosure, thus causing any small gaps you might have in the enclosure to pull air in rather than leaking it out. The other function of the diverter valve is temperature regulation inside the enclosure. First, you can see that the inlet to the filtration system is at the bottom of the enclosure and the outlet is at the top of the enclosure. This just naturally helps mix the air and keep the air in the enclosure at a consistent temperature. For plastics like PLA, we don't want the enclosure to be hot at all. In fact, room temperature at most is all we want. When I'm printing PLA, I open the diverter valve completely, which keeps the enclosure right around 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So initially when I created the diverter valve, uh, what I found was that it was fairly easy for the pressure coming off the fan to be able to move the diverter valve and open it. So I actually installed a small micro servo here uh, with the intention of using an Arduino or the Octoprint that I have hooked up on the 3D printer in the future to control the temperature within the enclosure automatically. But for now, the servo just keeps the diverter valve in place, and I just manually adjust it. This design I'm going to go ahead and upload to my printables website, and I will include a link down below in the video. If you guys have any questions or thoughts or ideas for improving this design, you know, let me know in the comments. So that wraps it up for this video. I know it's pretty short, like I said. Uh, I really need to get back to 3D printing more parts out of polycarbonate and nylon for both the... RC Hypercar as well as the Streamliner. So wish me luck with all that uh, 3D printing and uh, stay safe out there.